everyone. Welcome to this week's episode on Laid Back the Atrozinka Podcast. And our topic for this week is consistency and fashion. Our guest for this week is Inkem Louis Aka, who is a nurse here in the UK. Inkem runs her of fashion label Louis Designs and also has her from um, her own YouTube channel. Welcome, Inkem, to the show. Hi, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. But first of all, is this your first? I know you've done a lot of vlogs, but is this your first podcast? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is definitely my first um, podcast. Yeah. So, I, I, I'm an introduction to the podcast world. <laughs> I know, right? It's actually interesting. I listen to a lot of podcasts, yeah. but I've never been on one before. Yeah. Is there a particular one that you are fond of? A particular podcast that you are fond of? Um, I listen to Diary of a CEO. I listen to I Said What I Said. I listen to um, Monday Mother Mystery. Just okay. because it's actually intriguing. Um, to speak about all these matters that happened a long time ago and how the investigation w- went and all of that. So yeah, I listened to quite a few. Interesting. I know about um, the Diary of CEO and um, I said what I said. For the yeah. mother thing, okay, no comment. <laughs> 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 yeah. No comment. But let's right, let's get um, into our, um, our topic. Um, so how did you get into fashion and have you always been entrepreneur? I got into fashion, I believe, um, I think just, just about when I finished school, when I finished uni, I've always liked fashion and I liked making things myself. So when I started, you know, making clothes and stuff like that, it wasn't like so difficult for me. I learned uh, most of things like making clothes on YouTube pattern drafting did a couple of online courses and stuff like that so yeah i i've always been entrepreneurial from when i was in uni i would buy things and sell while i was in school and i basically make money on the side i worked i worked i've been working for a long time to be very honest right from when i was in school and it's not something that from our culture people are used to especially when you come from a place where maybe your parents are okay they used to providing everything for you and you don't necessarily need to earn earn an income or earn a living but if you like to have things and if you like to shop and you have like a certain type of lifestyle that you want to keep having you probably need to make money you know and yeah buying and selling was something i've always done so it just it came quite easy to me to be honest mm. interesting because um a lot of people when they try something new um there's this fear and doubt that that creep in so how did you did you first of all i don't know if i say how did you deal with it but did you did you actually f- feel any sort of fear or doubt like did you have imposter syndrome going into the yeah, fear and doubt is always going to be a constant thing that people are going to fear that imposter syndrome is real and especially when you get to a point where you're beginning to make some sort of progress you start to feel like you know this doubt and i'm going to tell you this is something i still struggle with today um prior to moving to england i put my business on hold for like a year plus because i had to study and i had so many things to do you know to prepare me to get um to work here so my business wasn't functioning for a long time if you know what I mean, yeah. and moved to the UK and I settled and I'm, you know, getting ready to get back into business. I have this constant fear that because I've been out of business for a long time, you know, is it going to work? Are uh, my customers going to want to buy again from me? How do I plan on running the business? Am I going to have, you know, a bunch of stock um, stock with me because there's no way to sell? Am I going to be able to sell? You know, there's just this constant fear and doubt that I don't know if this is going to work again and all of that. But the truth is, you, you're never going to know until you, you start. Yeah. You have to do it and find out. You, <laughs> this is something I have to tell myself every single day that I, you know, am gradually working on my business and trying to come back in, into the fashion business again. You will never know until you try. You never know how many people who will see your product and they like it and they want to be part of it until you get it out, until you start trying to market it, until you start trying to like put your business out, out there. So fear and doubt 
is something that people are you're always going to you know be faced with it's how you react to those fear and doubts is what really matters okay Um, yeah but that leads me to my next question because you said um um before prior to moving to england you actually um passed your business for a year to to study um and all so but now that you are here so is there any particular routine that you follow each day to make sure you meet the demands of being a nurse being a youtube content creator and being a fashion um entrepreneur so is, is there anything you do to make sure you meet the demands of these three things you are doing at the same time yeah i <laughs> i'm looking for the best way to answer that question honestly it's prioritizing yeah. what are my priorities so number one i need to make a living and sustain myself while i'm here and while i'm planning to you know run my business um part of those things that i have to be good at my job so i don't have any stressor from my workplace that is like the primary source of my income secondly i have to be disciplined and that is something that is very hard to cultivate especially as an adult who lives alone and no one tells you what to do because it's easier for people to take instructions and you know when you're accountable someone else has to hold you accountable as opposed to when you have to hold yourself accountable so for example you know you're not going to go late to work because you don't want to be queried but when it's time to do your own thing and no one is going to query you are you disciplined enough to get up and get it done so this is something i have to tell myself every time i have to film for youtube every time i have to plan for my business every time i have to go through like planning for a business doing the sketches and whatever it is whatever work in fact down to me waking up and working out this is something i have to tell myself are you going to be disciplined enough to hold yourself accountable when it's time to do it because no one is in your face telling you you have to do it or you don't have any sanctions you know possible sanctions that you feel like are going to be negative towards you so when you have nobody policing you are you going to be you know disciplined enough to get up and do it in most cases no unless it's something you constantly or consciously work towards it's difficult at the end of the day yeah but you've mentioned discipline a lot you're right so mm-hmm. well, we now talk about consistency in fashion yeah first of all what does it actually mean when we say consistency in fashion and what is the role of discipline in maintaining this consistency consistency in fashion basically means staying true to your style your aesthetics and um what fashion means to you fashion is subjective right which is why people have different types of style when you see someone or when you see it like when you have someone in your life for example your sister or your friend or your wife when you look at the way they dress and what their sense of style is you would notice that they tend to lean towards a particular type of style and when it comes to fashion or fashion business for example consistency means that you're able to deliver to your audience or your clients that level of quality style aesthetics whatever it's service that they are used to or that you've promised them basically you know and that is how people stand out in in business or survive in business if you're able to give what you promise to your clients day in day out especially when the business gets tough because it, it does get tough um you know when now that we're in a cost of living crisis or even back in nigeria when things are sort of on shaky the dollar prices are, are getting high the cost of fabrics are getting increased every single day are you able to deliver the same quality of fabrics that your clients know or are you going to go for a subsidized or sub you know a less a much a much less quality of fabrics because you're trying to save cost these are the things that you sort of like you look into or you consider i i have for example if you um pay attention to my whatsapp i have a client and a friend who sent me a picture of a dress that I made in 2017, yeah. I believe, and it still looked 
good as new. It was one of the most sought after outfits that I've ever made. It was a simple design. The quality of the fabric was top notch. And I get this from my friends who, well, clients who became my friends and we've kept in touch all these years. And they kept saying, when I buy your outfits, I know it's going to last. The quality is what I'm never disappointed in. And particularly with this outfit that I'm referring to, because there are two different colors. And in, one thing about color is there's a tendency if you don't buy good quality that it's going to spill which was something I was I was worried about when I was creating that design. But she's had this outfit since 2017, right? That's six years now. And it looks good as new. No spillage, no, um, no wear or tear, nothing. It's still good as new. It's something that people or my clients are always going to associate with me. They always get quality. Yeah. So for me, that's consistency. The fact that they know that anytime they come back to Louis Clothing, they know, they know that they're going to get quality. And it's not even about the pricing. And I'm not even trying to get, you know, you to spend much more. Because how much were those fabrics? I remember that dress was sold for between seven to 10,000 Naira, I believe. But it's something, imagine something you bought for seven, 10,000 Naira using it for six years. Yeah. You've gotten, you've gotten your money's worth whether you like whether you want to be honest to yourself or not do you understand so consistency means staying true and it takes a lot of discipline and you reminding yourself that no matter how tough it gets i'm not going to go below standard because i want you to come back to me two years from now and tell me oh this outfit i bought from you has really served me and i'm and i'm thankful for it because i want you to come back even though i've taken what over two years from from business that you see little clothing again to advertising that they're back in business and you're interested in buying because you know that I didn't disappoint you, you know, the last time. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um in terms of fashion, you, you consistency actually means um to you it's all about quality to make sure you put out quality stuff for your clients. Yes. Yeah. But show up every day. Yeah. Thinking about it like if you look around us, um, consistency is something most of us struggle with. Um, mm. and most of the time, we may say we want this, but at the end of the time, maybe we succumb to peer pressure or crowd mentality, and we end up do going going um going below our standards to do things because we feel like it's, it's what's giving everybody money right now. So, why do you think a lot of people struggle with consist um consistency? It's basically. <laughs> when you're not your own person yeah and let me explain this in in a way that i feel like people are going to understand it when you're your own person you are you have this level of assurance and trust in your own thinking and your own decisions and that is not to say that you don't want to listen to other people or you're not um taking advice from other people or even considering their opinion but you're not easily swayed yeah. by the conversations that are happening outside and i'll give you an example we when it comes to fashion we live in a world where we have so many things there's a lot of noise you know you open instagram you open tiktok you open twitter like whatever you open any social media platform and you're constantly bombarded with pictures videos different brands different styles what's in trend what's raining now what people like you know and all of that you have to build thick skin and a certain level of tolerance to not be overtaken by all of that all that information yeah you know you have to be able to be your own person and constantly remind yourself that this is what i stand for and this is what i want to be about and this is something like i'm going to be honest we actually struggle with sometimes because there are times when i'm trying to do a design and the next thing i take a break i look on instagram i see 20 people rocking these styles that you know maybe body parts are showing or they're using share fabrics and like oh they look nice but deep down i know this is not what this is not the brand i'm trying to build but i'm tempted because i feel like this is what's trending and people are going to buy a lot of this so we we have a few things the fact that we have so many things right up in our face you know a lot of pictures and information and whatnot being bombarded at us daily that would if you're if you're not 
your own person you're very easily swayed okay. by what you think is happening in the society or what you think that the society wants do you understand yeah it's one of the big things that make people not you know it, <laughs> you feel like oh i know this is what i want or you know i'm trying to be you know this is the the business or the idea or the brand that i want to build a what i want people to know me for and then when you see something else you're like oh but this is nice let me go over there Mm. you actually have to do that conscious work to constantly remind yourself this is what i'm for this is what i want to be for this is what i want to be remembered for and block out the noise because to be honest a lot of noise they can be nice noise cute noise colorful noise but it's still noise because that's not what you want and another thing is do you actually know what you want for fashion designers or fashion creators do you have you do you know what have you met do you have a definition of what you want if i come up to you and tell you what what do you want how do you want us to recognize you as a business what's your business all about are you able to explain that to me in a way that i understand because that's another thing because if you don't know who you are you are lost and you're basically trying to adapt to whatever you see that you think that people like yeah does that make sense but th- I, I get what you mean but when you when you also think about it um a lot of consistency is all about repetition mm. or to be honest um if you want to be consistent in your workout like you mentioned like you do is is repetition <laughs> saying you must and it can get boring isn't it exactly it gets boring <laughs> So, but how do you think one can keep that, maintain that energy, that zest, that enthusiasm while being consistent? Because it gets boring if we are being honest with ourselves. It's not that easy. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. It gets boring. But you, it's something you have to do. Work is boring. Especially when you work in a hospital. I mean, no, not necessarily. Though. Interest, uh, hospital work can be interesting as a nurse. Depends on the department where you work. When you work in... Um, surgical, emergency, even sometimes medical, it's interesting. It can be interesting, but at the same time, it can be boring. You have to, um, how do I put this? Sort of reteach yourself to figure out how to make boring things interesting for you. Think about it this way. Enjoy the journey of it. Yeah. So uh, for me, for example, um, I started working out consistently this year in March. Um, and that was because I, I went to we went to Marrakesh and some of the outfits I wore in Marrakesh didn't it wasn't given the way I wanted to, to well, give. I know that's a little yeah. thing. But yeah, it wasn't given. I, I had this really nice yellow booboo dress that I made, but I could still see my stomach protruding and I'm like, this is a very big ass dress, man. Like why is it it, it, it wasn't giving? So we came back and my friends I said I'm I'm going on a diet and I'm going to work out. And I started working out and at first it was just something like, Oh, let me lose a couple of kgs and then that's it. But then something happened to me. Um I used to have increased heart rate. So basically I can hear my heart pounding out and I've been on medication for that for like over a year. But then when I started working out and running consistently, I I stopped having that, you know. It, you know how when you go to the doctors and they tell you, oh, you need to exercise more, these are the benefits. You would never really understand it doing until it. you start to see, actually not even doing it, until you start to see the, the, the benefits, real life and the changes. Because I can tell you, usually when I'm at home and relaxing or maybe watching TV, I could hear myself breathe and like it, it, it's like i'm running yeah. my heart rate is as fast as if i'm running but now it doesn't happen to me anymore in fact it stopped happening to me two months six weeks eight weeks into the into me you know working out and it was a health benefit that actually made me tell myself that i'm going to keep working out now after june right i sort of lost the zeal to work out yeah because it was now very boring for me it became boring yeah. and tiring and i just want to sleep in but i have to remind myself that you're getting really good benefits from exercising and eating healthy and while it takes a lot of self-discipline to do all of that yes 
if you're looking at it as a lifestyle angle then okay maybe not every you don't have to be on a diet every day once in a while you can order pizza and you drink a glass of wine and you go out to eat and you do whatever eat ice cream but always remember that for the 60 or 70 percent you want to eat healthy and you want to keep exercising yeah so that helped me realize that okay it doesn't have to be as boring as it you know as i'm saying it i just have to change a couple of things and then it came the issue of but i'm tired i work 12 hours and four four five times a week four five days a week how do i now you know incorporate that oh i'm being switched from night shifts to day shifts how do i know i have to be at work at seven which means i have to be out of the house at past six so how do i make it work it's all about your your thinking make it interesting if i tell you i wake up at 4 4 a.m every day to work out will you believe it my alarm rings sorry my alarm rings at 4 a.m and i'm up the bed it might take me five ten minutes (laughs) to lazy about no more but i know i'm going to get out of that bed and i'm going to get in into the workout now thank god for technology thank god for youtube because all the i can switch in between exercises when i feel like i'm doing one particular thing and it's becoming boring for me i try and do something else completely different if i feel like i'm so tired and my muscles hurt and i just need to relax i can decide to decide to just do yoga for the workout it's you you have to do the work of constantly reminding yourself that i have to make something that i think is boring interesting interesting Mm -hmm. enjoy that journey the sweat you know the pounding heart the music in my ears the fact that i have to play different songs it keeps pumping my spirit and my energy and helps me get through that workout for an hour i've moved from um 15 minutes workout to 20 minutes workout to 30 minutes workout i'm doing one hour workouts and that didn't come because i really really love workout working out or enjoy you know exercise no it's from me building that love i'm not seeing it as boring anymore i'm seeing it as you know it's it's fun thing i'm looking at the things about it that i enjoy the fact that i listen to music and the music that are interesting and i you know i just generally love music yeah. those are the things i'm enjoying the journey not just thinking about it as i'm going to exercise i'm going to live to it and you know to be honest it's a lot of mental work yeah. <laughs> you have to do that. you have to do you have to do that mental work it's but if you do it i promise you every other thing becomes easy yeah but this is the reason why i ask here yeah. <laughs> um um for you to be successful in any endeavor not just um you exercising or the fashion you must be consistent so yeah. for example like this podcast we're doing right now for you to get to um reach all the global audience i'm hoping it's going to get to, you have to be consistent it's life in everything mm-hmm. um so away from exercise and fashion now how do you think one can be consistent because we we all know we need patience (laughs) so how do you think one can be since every day is different how do you think one can be consistent whether it is in um in um let's say there's someone doing an experiment in the lab it's not working out how do you think the person can maintain that consistency to keep going that persistence and patience to keep going even when things are not working out it's just the plan keep planning plan the the little things do you know it's the little things that you do celebrate every little thing that you do that goes well because it's not always going to go well yeah you know what you're going to you know the journey like you know the not the journey the destination where are you going to how do i get there i have to keep moving for me to get there yeah if i stop then i'm not going to get to that destination but how do i get to that destination i have to keep moving yeah you have to constantly tell yourself i need to keep moving mm-hmm. giving up is not an option i need to keep moving and it's you pl- and you also plan to keep moving so where let's say for someone who wants to start a youtube channel and you're starting from zero and you want to become this successful youtube person you know grow your following make money off of youtube that's your destination how do i get that by simply making youtube videos and posting them and promoting them 
okay there are times when you don't feel like doing any of those things but you have to remind yourself it's things as little as having the wallpaper on your phone that reminds you all those little reminders reminds you to you know keep going giving up is not an option you need to set reminders that help you become consistent i i have I have um, a wallpaper that says, do not soft life yourself into death. And this was because... <laughs> not uh, not soft, life. Soft, soft life yourself into death. Okay, what does that mean? So, you know, when you spend so much and you rack up a debt? Yeah. I know that I like soft life too much. But this is a reminder to myself because we've not made the type of money that we want to make that will make us stop looking at price tags. Yeah. I am reminding myself every day to consciously watch my spending habits. Yeah. Just by looking at my phone. And you look at your phone a couple of times. So if you have something that you need to be consistent with, it's a good idea just to make a, you know, a wallpaper and have it on your phone that reminds you every day. Yeah you need to keep moving and you cannot give up remember your destination yeah and then enjoying the journey to that destination is something that will not make it become for a lack of better word less boring for you while you go through that journey Mm. interesting but anyway because of time um i want you to think about this last question if Let's say there's a um let's say there's a young girl mm. who walks up to you now and says, Oh, I'm I'm really, really struggling. I'm trying to um set up my own brand. Let's say she's trying to become a YouTube or content creator as well. Mm. What are the five ways in your own world that you think you tell her that will help her to build or improve her consistency? First of all, write everything down. Have a journal okay you can always go back to that and you know look remember how you felt when you when you wanted to start because this deal to start is always higher than when you're going through the journey yeah. right so you need something to always remind you you know this was how i felt when i wanted to start and when you start to lose that zeal yeah. to keep going you can always go back to that so have a journal write everything down okay yeah number two there's nothing like perfection it's a myth as far as i'm concerned there's nothing like perfection and it, this is one of the big things that i struggled with because i wanted everything to look a certain way aesthetically pleasing perfect crisp pictures or videos and, and whatnot it's nothing like perfection yeah. and i used to see people especially on instagram who did funny video random videos and you know they are moving forward and they are thriving and this is because they're not chasing perfection they just want to get it out of there so just start yeah. stop waiting for everything to be perfect just just start already and then you continue to improve along the way okay. you know another thing is to plan yeah, but, but is, is, is it, isn't journaling part of the planning by writing everything? Uh, no, journaling is more like I'm putting down my ideas and everything. You can also plan with your journal, okay. you okay. know, but planning includes having like a more detailed step by step actions for you to take. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not just by saying, oh, I want to put out a video on summer outfits that I'm going to wear. Oh, I think that would be a nice video. I want to do maybe a shopping haul. No. Planning is you detailing step by step plan. So this is the title of the video. This is how I want the thumbnail to look. I'm going to film three or four looks. I will buy this or wear this or wear this or do that. This is like having detailed actions to take. Yeah. in order to make that video come alive yeah. planning is very important and i didn't even realize how important it is until i started doing like a couple of videos for ads and i realized that for each video that i put out i actually have to script it and i'm still learning i didn't know you have to do script writing yeah. this is not a movie production yeah. but actually you have to do it 
and i realized that when i did those work shooting the videos and editing them became a lot easier yeah yeah i agree with that yeah so you have to plan at the end of the day plan it doesn't have to be a perfect plan but you need to have a plan it's kind of like a direction to guide you as you're taking those actions to bring your idea to life yeah so planning is very important the next thing is do not be ashamed to tell people what you do don't be nah you shouldn't be (laughs) do not be ashamed to like you should be shameless i'm telling you (laughs) and i still struggle with this this is something people especially the quiet person Uh, see, if you don't like too much talk, sorry, sorry, I'm cutting you short there, but mm-hmm. I, I, I would say I'm, I, I'm a calm, quiet person. But like, I, see, if you do not promote yourself, nobody's going to do it for you. That's one thing. I exactly. Mean. No matter how calm and quiet you are, you have to because there's someone else promoting themselves somewhere else. It's so what's the point? You, you know what I remind yourself. myself? Yeah. If people as big as Rihanna and Beyonce and the Kardashians yeah. are shamelessly plugging their business every single step of the way, I'm sorry, who am I? Yeah. Who am I again? Do you understand? Yeah. So be ready to to like preach the goodness of your 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 business. To Everyone. anybody who cares to listen or who does not care to listen, I don't care if you want to listen, but I'm going to be in your. I'm going to tell you. Yeah. You know. So just you know, do that. And the last thing is, um, hmm. Just be a representative or a representation of you know your whatever it is you're doing, your brand. Yeah. Be that. One of the things I regret is, and it's not like regret, it's just something I feel like I would want to do more. When I made clothes, I I made all the first, like the samples in my size. Yeah. And I would literally, I would have people who want to buy that particular one I'm wearing. I just have it dry clean and sent to them. And a lot of the pieces I made, I don't own them. And I miss that, you know. It would have been good to just at least keep it would working. have been good to have every piece of what i made a lot of them i've had to give and they were really good pieces and now when i see people who wear things that I, they bought from me i'm kind of jealous because i i made this thing how come i don't have a piece you know be a representation of your business your brand let people identify you with it because you're the best person that can sell yourself at the end of the day at the end of the, true, true true so yeah those are my five things mm, interesting so um from what you said i writing everything down planning mm-hmm. to everything to the letter having a mm-hmm. set goal um, um at least um promoting yourself shamelessly all these are really really important oh. yeah well um thank you so much in camp for coming on to the show this is all the time we have for this week you're welcome yeah i hope you enjoyed your first podcast oh yeah i was actually in- oh, i didn't realize i had to talk so much but yes this was really good this was interesting well the most important thing i, I I'm, I'm happy you enjoyed it and i hope.